All right, welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about persistence, long-term persistence and the enemies of long-term persistence and how to beat them. My name is Nick Redmark. I'm a Swiss coach engineer. What does this mean? It means that I'm an engineer and I apply those skills to personal development and I bring them to you on a daily basis. So this video is dedicated to you. Uh, I think your name is Alex. Lifeline anyway is his channel name. He wrote great advice as usual, my friend. Don't worry about the low views right now. So he wrote me an encouraging comment, which I appreciate a lot. And so I recommend that you check out his channel. He's also a fellow personal development YouTuber, as it looks like, so check him out. I want to dedicate this video to people like you, people who are trying to create something online of value, at least enough value to build an audience around it, and possibly to build enough value so that uh, a business might thrive around this. And I've been trying to build an online business for a few years now, one cannot say that I've been hugely successful, but something that can definitely not be said is that I'm not persistent about it. With more than 150 videos on this channel, that's just one of the things that can be testified at. So the question is, how can you stay persistent in the long term? The raw answer is you need to find motivation again and again and again. And the key mechanism of motivation is that you need to feel that you're making progress. Now, progress is complex because progress is not a linear thing, especially if you are like start on an enterprise like that or anything worthwhile, it's going to be a long way before any publicly recognizable progress. So you cannot stop there. You cannot think I want to have a million in my bank account and then just hope that it's going to happen soon enough so that you don't lose motivation. It's way too far, it's way too big, or you want a million followers on YouTube, all that kind of th uh, stuff won't really help you. So how do we approach this? Let's start with this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think it's a masterpiece. It's really helpful. The thing that I want to extract from this book is actually its main structure. It's divided in two parts, private victory, and then public victory. Meaning it talks first about the things that you need to do to kind of improve yourself and then the things that you need to do to attain public victory. And this quote has kind of remained in my mind all these years. I think we can kind of make it even more precise. And then I would like to use this framework. There are three types of progress. One is progress in terms of effort. Two is progress in terms of skills and three progress in terms of results and we are going to look at all three of them and here we encounter our first enemy the first enemy is called lack of commitment so since uh, you you need to put a lot of effort that's the basis of everything and uh, if you lack commitment you're not going to put it so this is your the first enemy and the antidote to this enemy is to find your why and commit to it consciously and here I could talk along about that. There was a phase where I was talking about meaning-centered coaching, where it's really about digging deep within yourself. What is, what are your deepest motivations? What do you really want in life? And also there's a lot of work that you need to do of integrating different interests, maybe even like sacrificing one for the other or creating at least a hierarchy, a, a, an integrated whole. So your why is really something that you need to build. And then once you kind of find it, it's never going to be perfect. You need to commit to it. You need to make a ritual and commit to it. Otherwise you're never going to put the effort that is really needed. Then second enemy is to, to, to make your effort dependent on, on things that are outside of your control. You know, thinking about success and all that kind of stuff. And the antidote really there is like, you have to forget about that. This is the core. You have to commit to consistent effort because it's the only thing that you can control. And this is the only type of progress that you're going to be able to measure on a, on a linear basis. You know, anything else, as I said at the beginning, progress is not linear. This can be linear if you commit to it. But then there are other two enemies, overwhelm and boredom. So this is a risk. Whenever you commit to making effort, the risk is that you uh, push yourself too much and then become overwhelmed or that you push yourself too little and then you become bored. So the antidote there is to find the zone. And there is this little drawing that I made uh, that shows basically how 
you you should push your ambition just enough to uh, over like be a bit above your skill level and that's the zone that's the thing that's going to be make you maximally motivated by the way i want to mention my instagram account because it's basically a place where i put all these illustrations plus some more and it's really something that i started using a week ago or so it's the first time i use instagram in a way i feel proud about and so that's why i decided to share it with you anyway let's move on let's let's talk about skill what uh, can we observe about skill and here i want to quote another book called mastery by George Leonard, another really good book that influenced me a lot. And as is the case with most of these books, there are perhaps a few concepts that remained with me for my whole life. And so the concept that remained with me from this book is the mastery curve. And here what you see is that if you really want to practice a skill uh, over time, you will make progress in terms of skills um, only from time to time. It will go up and then go down a little bit and then create a plateau. And if you give up when the plateau arises, then you will never become really good at it. So this is enemy number five. Enemy number five is plateaus in, in terms of skills. And that's something that's going to definitely frustrate you. And there the antidote is to commit to mastery. Whatever you're doing, commit to, become, to becoming the best you can be at it, which is basically a lifelong endeavor. Now let's look at the last type of progress, results. That's the most dangerous type of progress. As I said, you should not focus too much on this, even the skills, you should not focus too much on these types of progress. Uh, you should focus on putting regular effort. But then, on the other hand, these types of uh, progress are also important, so let's talk about them as well. So, as we meet num enemy number six, it's wanting absolute certainty. And, and this is one of my weaknesses. I want to know that uh, what I'm doing will be successful. And obviously that's not possible. It's, uh, there is no guarantee. And uh, th this is really something that you basically need to embrace. You, you need to know I'm doing it and I might fail and, and that's it. Uh, and that's life. This is reality. Reality is there is no guarantee. And um, the alternative is just to give up from the start. And since we are all gonna die anyway, you might as well have tried. Let's move on to another book that is really good that I mentioned already a couple of times on this channel, Atomic Habit. I appreciated that a lot. And uh, there is another little kind of complex chart here. The straight line that you see is what you think should happen in terms of results, which is linear progress. But what happens in reality is that uh, progress is more exponential. So at the beginning it grows so slowly that you don't even notice it. It's like watching grass grow. And then it like speeds up and it becomes noticeable. And then that's when it becomes this publicly recognizable progress that tempts many people to get started, but again, like frustrates people when they don't see the results. And so here the enemy is lack of humility. So you, you think uh, the only progress that is worthwhile is this big stuff. You making money, you having, you becoming popular, that kind of stuff. And there the answer is to gam gamify this, to uh, break the big milestones down into smaller and smaller and smaller milestones. Let's talk about when you build a channel. The first time someone you don't know makes a comment, right? That, that's a milestone, it's small, something small. The first time, the first hater, that's another one, right? You know, like, it means that someone cared enough about what you're doing in one way or another to, to engage with it, even if it's in a negative way. In a sense, to have a hater is a, is a privilege. Not many channels have that. But then, there is another um, tip that you can use uh, for this enemy of uh, lack of humility, which is gratitude. That's the other side of the coin. Basically, it means you should celebrate every small sign of progress. It's not just about the future, which uh, maybe you don't know yet what, what will be the small milestones that we, you will encounter. But what you can do is pay attention and really like uh, pay attention to what's going on and see, OK, this is a first. It's the first time I get a like on my video. It's the first time someone shares a video of mine somewhere else. It's the first time someone talked about what I'm doing in real life. All these small things are things that you should pay attention to and be great about. So that you know there is progress and you can motivate yourself to continue working. If your role is to watch grass grow, then you should bring a microscope. That's the idea. I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. Maybe see you on Instagram but definitely see you again here tomorrow. Bye.